There are places in this world where the expectations of reality are broken. A place that has lost its purpose or never had one to begin with. A place that expects you to swiftly transition through it, but it feels wrong when you overstay your welcome. These are places the internet has coined as liminal spaces. A place between what was and what is. Places that exist between the threshold of reality. Liminal Spaces is a topic I've been passionate about for a very long time, and because of its very nature of being unexplainable, it's really hard to define what a liminal space is. In this video, we will take a deep dive into the intricacies of liminal spaces, figure out why and how things are liminal, and understand the feeling of liminality. Welcome to the true meaning of liminal spaces. The main definition many people go by for liminal spaces is that it means a transitional space or relating to threshold. I think this definition doesn't do a very good job at accurately representing liminal spaces as it only covers a portion of them. It is relatively correct though because transitional spaces are some of the best examples of liminal spaces, and most liminal spaces can be linked back to a transition or threshold. For example, this image isn't really transitional at all, but it still creates that unexplainable liminal feeling. The way I like to describe liminal spaces is a place that breaks the expectations of its intended purpose or context, or the expectations of reality itself. This can mean many things, such as a place being viewed in a context it's not supposed to be in, a place that has lost its purpose or seemingly has no purpose at all, a place where reality seems altered, a place that feels real and fake at the same time sitting on the threshold of reality. For example, take this bookstore. A bookstore is a place that's meant to be full of the bustling movement of people and have shelves full of books. But in this image, there's no people, the shelves are empty, and ominous text floats above. Your expectation of a bookstore's purpose is broken. The pre-designed context you are familiar with is gone. It makes you feel like you aren't supposed to be there. That's why this image is liminal. It feels as if reality has been altered. This definition still works for transitional spaces too. Transitional places are built with the intended purpose and context of being transitioned through. When you overstay your welcome in these places, the purpose is lost and you are stuck in between the threshold, creating the liminal feeling. You don't go to a train station just to be there. You go to a train station to get on a train and leave. But when you stay for too long and the train station becomes empty and lifeless, the context has changed. The main feeling liminal spaces give off is loneliness. The majority of liminal images have no people in it, and that's for a good reason. The absence of life is essential to the liminal feeling. When a place that's meant to be full of people is left devoid of life, it creates an uneasy feeling. You are used to the ambience of people, and when that ambience has changed, when the context of the place is shifted into the unknown, it can feel scary or uncanny. You rely on your expectations of reality, and when they are broken, it instills fear. The fear of being truly alone, with nothing to rely on, not even reality itself. A liminal space can also feel oddly familiar even if you haven't been there before. This is because many places around the world follow the same architectural rules, so they can end up looking extremely similar. Liminal spaces are usually insignificant places that you've passed through many times before without paying much attention to them. Because of this, you've never really taken in all of the details, so your memory of it stays as a hazy, incomplete familiarity. This familiar but not feeling is very strongly linked to liminality. For some people, liminal spaces can create very positive or therapeutic feelings. When everyone else has moved on from a space, it is left empty for you to exist within, allowing you to wander around a purposeless place all by yourself. The stagnant air makes it feel frozen in time, relieving your stress and worries. Liminal spaces can also be exciting. Seeing a place in the same context every single day can make it feel mundane and boring. This is why you always pass through these spaces without paying much attention to them. Seeing a space like a hallway or a parking garage in a completely new and surreal context can be refreshing. It allows you to find something new and take in details you are never able to take in. It allows you to appreciate a liminal space as a work of art. But what are the different ways a space can become liminal and why? In order to truly understand liminal spaces, we need to understand exactly what makes these spaces liminal. As I said earlier, the main idea of a liminal space is breaking the expectations of reality or changing the pre-designed context or purpose. There are many ways for this to happen. Emptiness is a key part of liminal spaces as we talked about earlier. Places that are usually in the context of being full of people but are now left empty are liminal. The lack of people is pretty much a requirement for a place to be liminal.
Sometimes there are places where the conditions such as weather, time of day, or lighting are always the same when you visit. When the expectations of the usual conditions are broken, it becomes liminal. Such as a school, usually visited during the day, now shrouded in the darkness of night. Or a playground, usually visited during clear weather, covered by a mysterious fog. When it comes to buildings, an expectation that you rely on is the existence of an entrance and an exit. When an entrance or exit are nowhere to be seen, it feels as if you are stuck within a threshold. With no way to exit, you are trapped in an infinite, never-ending transition. For example, this image of a hotel feels so wrong in many different ways. There's no sky in the courtyard, no entrances, exits, or any doors at all to be seen. It feels like you're trapped in an alternate reality. The loss of the intended purpose can also make a place become liminal. The intended purpose for an airplane interior is to have seats in it, but when a plane has no seats, it's left purposeless and liminal, creating an entirely new context to view it in. Or a bookstore with no books, a room with no furniture, a Yankee with no brim- wait a second, not that. Flooded liminal spaces are a good example of a place losing its purpose. When a train station is mysteriously flooded with water, it creates an unusual context where it can't be used as it's supposed to be used. But sometimes, a place feels like it never had a purpose to begin with. Such as this tube in the wall for seemingly no reason, this confusing hallway with non-functioning windows on the walls, architecture with no logical sense, empty, purposeless rooms and hallways. A subgenre of liminal spaces known as liminal pools are a very good example of a purposeless space. These pools have incredibly confusing architecture that makes no logical sense. It boggles your mind with its purposeless pillars and hallways. Sometimes there's not even a roof, or sometimes you're claustrophobically stuck in a room where every surface is covered in the same exact white tile and is filled with shallow water that isn't even deep enough to swim in. The back rooms also represent a liminal space with no purpose. It feels like a space created in a dream, where every hallway and corner you turn just leads to the same yellow tinted walls as you slowly get driven insane by the low hum of the fluorescent lights. Places like the backrooms or liminal pools feel like an empty shell of reality. It takes inspiration from things you are familiar with, but doesn't quite put them together in a way that makes any logical sense. It's for this reason that some liminal images feel uncanny. When the laws of reality seem to not work as they are supposed to, it becomes liminal. In this picture, the road seemingly breaks all the rules of perspective. There's also not a single car or human to be seen, which adds to the uncanny emptiness. There's also no way to compare the scale of anything, adding to the impossible perspective. It warps your perception of reality. In this image, there's no logical spot for this light to be coming from. Sometimes there's a mysterious crease in the empty background sky, or maybe a reflective liquid from another dimension is flooding a hallway. When reality is altered, it breaks the expectations you are used to, creating a liminal space. Some reality-altering images use the concept of infinity to their advantage. When a space is seemingly infinitely large, it breaks your perception of reality and becomes liminal. An infinitely large space has no entrances and no exits. It simply exists as an impossible threshold. Take this image of a ski lift. A ski lift is a transitional thing meant to take you from the bottom of a mountain to the top, but instead it fades into the fog of the unknown abyss. There's no way to perceive how long the ski lift truly is. It could quite possibly be a never-ending threshold without a beginning or end at all. When there's absolutely nothing on the horizon as far as the eye can see, it can also give the illusion of an infinitely large space.
dream worlds or dreamlike imagery are extremely liminal for many reasons. First off, the act of dreaming is an inherently transitional thing because you sleep from one day to the next. The dream worlds themselves always have seemingly no purpose, wacky nonsensical landscapes or incomplete details, which are all elements that can make something liminal. Because of this, many images in the dream core aesthetic are very liminal. Nostalgia is also an inherently transitional thing. Nostalgic memories signify the transition from young to old. This is why nostalgic places from your incomplete and hazy memories are very liminal. These are places you have already transitioned through in your life, and revisiting the threshold when you're older lets you see them in a new context, creating liminality. Because of the haziness of distant memories, only certain details are kept intact. This is why you can feel nostalgic towards images of places you've never been before. You're nostalgic towards its details, but not the entire place itself. Such as the wallpaper in your grandma's house, the colorful plastic of the playground, the artistic walls of a daycare, the pixelated textures of an old game you grew up with. Nostalgia is one of the most important factors of liminal spaces, which is why the majority of liminal images can invoke feelings of nostalgia in some way. <laughs> The true meaning of liminal spaces, the core of liminality, is the exploration of context. Visiting a place outside of its pre-designed context, experiencing reality in a new context, whether that be the conditions or emptiness of a place, or altering reality itself, these spaces show the power of context. A truly insignificant place can be wildly different with a simple change of perspective. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe. And if you want to support me even more, feel free to use the thanks or membership features or check out my merch, link in the description. I have many more liminal space related videos planned and I will also be talking about many more aesthetics. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of that. Okay, bye.